right? Um, when we multiply a number by one, we get the same number back. Similarly, if you multiply a matrix by and the identity matrix, you get the same thing back, okay? Now, let's talk about multiplicative inverse for a minute, right? If I have the number five, just the number five, right? What can I multiply this by in order to get a one? Well, you are probably thinking you can multiply by one over five, right? To get a one. This, you might say, is the reciprocal of five, but it's actually also the multiplicative inverse whoops, inverse of five. Meaning if I multiply a number by its multiplicative inverse, I get one. Which means then, if I have a matrix and I multiply it by its inverse, I should get not a one, but the identity matrix, okay? So you have a number, multiply it by its inverse, you get one. You have a matrix, multiply it by its inverse, you get the identity matrix. Okay, so then what is an inverse of a matrix? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Okay, um, this is exactly what we just mentioned, right? Um, the multiplicative inverse of a number a is one over a, right? Or I could say a to the negative one. So look, a times one over a, I can rewrite it as a times a to the minus one, and that gives you one. So it's the same with matrices, okay? Okay, so take a look at this question here. Um, or this statement, to verify that A and B are inverse matrices, you have to check that A times B gives you I and B times A gives you I. Remember how we said matrix multiplication was not commutative? It only is commutative when it's a matrix and it's inverse. In that case, whether you do AB or BA, you get the same thing and it's I, the in, uh, identity matrix. Okay, so take a look here. It says verify that A and B are inverse matrices. What we're gonna do here is first we're gonna multiply A times B. Okay, five, negative six, negative four, five. Okay, they're each a two by two, so the product is gonna be a two by two. Okay, all right, so let's take a look. Here, row one, column one, so row one, column one, I get 25 minus 24, one. Okay, you guys want me to write out the math or are you okay? Okay, next I have row one, column two. So that's gonna be row one, column two. And I get five times negative six, negative 30. Six times five, positive 30, zero. Down in the second row here, I have um, row two, column one. So that's four times five, 20. Five times negative four, negative 20, zero. And then lastly, in the last column, I have row one, column two, four times negative six, negative 24, five times five, 25, one. Oh my, look at that, what did I get? This is an identity matrix, okay? 
The main diagonal is ones, everything else is zeros. So I'm halfway done in verifying that these two are inverses. Next, what I need to do is B8. So that's the reverse order. And yesterday I made a big deal about how A, B, and B, A were not the same. Okay? Well, let's see. I'm going to get a 2 by 2. Okay. Row 1, column 1, 5 times 5, negative 6 times 4, that's a 1. Row 1, column 2, 5 times 6, negative 6 times 5, 0. Next, row 2, column 1, negative 4 times 5, and then 5 times 4, right? Those are zeros. Next, I have row 1, uh, row 2, column 2, negative 4 times 6, negative 24, 5 times 5, 25, 1. Oh my God, look, I got an identity matrix again, right? So I can say A and B are inverses. Okay? And you have to do both. It's an all or nothing deal. Now, if you do the first one, A, B, and you don't get the identity matrix, abort. Right there, you can just, you can already say they're not inverses. Okay? Ben. Um, I might have missed it, but how do you know if, is this the only way that an identity matrix looks? Like is one, zero, zero, one? Like how, how do you know if it's an identity matrix? So, yeah, so I had said that on the first page of the notes. An identity matrix basically is a square matrix. It's got a main diagonal of ones and everything else is zeros. Okay, okay, yeah. I Does it have to be a square matrix? It has to be a square matrix, yeah. What about uh, an augmented yeah. matrix that is also a square matrix, right? Say that again? Can an, can an augmented matrix be a square matrix? Yeah, so an augmented matrix is that part is square and then it just has like the coefficients on that side. Elon? So what happens if you get I for the first one and not for the second? Or, or can that happen? It can happen. Um, again, no, no deal. It's all or nothing. Okay, great. Now we know how to verify if two are inverses. Fine. How do you find an inverse though? Well, let's see. We're going to take this um, one type at a time. First, I'm going to talk to you about an inverse of a two by two matrix. Then we're gonna move on to three by three matrices. Okay, we're gonna talk about inverses, but also determinants. A determinant is a number, it's a scalar. Okay, it's just a plain old number. It is unique to a matrix and it is part of like the character, the characteristics of a matrix, okay? All right, let's see how we can find the determinant. If you have this matrix here, okay, a two by two. To find the determinant, here's what you do. You take the main diagonal, right? And you multiply the terms in there, A times D. It's down here, A times D. You take the other diagonal, B times C, you subtract them, and that is the determinant. Does it matter if it's DA or AD? No. But it does matter that you do the first diagonal, the main diagonal first, then minus the second one. Okay. All right, so how do you find the inverse then? Okay, so you have your matrix 
A, B, C, D, okay? Step one, you find the determinant. Step two, you modify your matrix. Here's what you do. Main diagonal, they switch seats. They just swap places. Second diagonal, they stay where they are, but you change their signs. Last step is you multiply this by one over the determinant. Okay. It's actually, um, and that's what we call A inverse. It's actually a lot more straightforward than you might think. Okay, let's take a look at this first one. So step one is find the determinant. Now, the determinant, we write it like this. Okay. And we take the main diagonal minus the second diagonal. This is 40 minus 40, zero. Okay. The inverse is now going to be one over the determinant of A times this new matrix, right? But if you get zero for the determinant, can you do that? Can you say one over zero? No, that means if determinant of A is zero, there is no inverse. And the matrix has a special name. We call that a singular matrix. Okay, so if you're ever on Jeopardy and this comes up, right? And you say, what is singular matrix? I need on-air credit right there, right? <laughs> okay, so let's move on and do another one. Here, first, let's find the determinant. Now, there is more than one symbol for determinant. This is one. Another way is we take the name of the matrix A and put it in vertical bars. These are not absolute value bars, these are vertical bars. We're kind of like recycling symbols, right? It's up to you which one you use. Okay, the determinant is negative 12 minus negative 16. Make sure, you know, to keep track of those negatives. So this gives me four, the determinant is four. Next, A inverse, right? That's the inverse, equals one over the determinant times. Okay. The main diagonal is going to switch seats. So we're going to get six and negative two. The other diagonal, right, is this is how it is originally, you change their signs, so you make it positive and negative. Okay, I know for this one, because they're both fours, it looks like they also switched places, but they just switched their signs. Next, you distribute. So this will be six over four, negative four over four, four over four, negative two over four. So finally, 
3 over 2 minus 1, 1, negative a half. Okay? That's A inverse. So we just learned how to find determinant and inverse for 2 by 2s. To expand it to 3 by 3s, there is more than one way to do it. There is the official way. This is the official way. It's called using cofactors, okay? And when you get deeper into math, that's the way, you know, real people do it. But there is also a shortcut, a fun little shortcut. That's what we're going to do here because that's enough for us. The point is to find the determinant, okay? Um, so here's how we do determinant. Um, you first reproduce the first and second columns to the right of the matrix. Just clone them. Then we draw diagonals like this. Two sets of diagonals. Three going to the right, three going to the left. Do you see how each of the diagonals passes through three numbers? Okay, you multiply the three numbers on each of the diagonals. Then we add the ones going this way and we subtract the ones going that way. Okay, let's do one. Okay, determinant of A. Okay, reproduce the first two row, uh, columns here. There is no math in that step. Okay, now, here's what we're going to do. Draw diagonals. One, two, three. You can only, the, you can't draw any more in that direction that will pass through three numbers, right? That's it. So now, determinant of A is going to be Okay, multiply each of the, um, each triplicate basically. So in the first diagonal, three times negative one times five, negative 15, plus second diagonal, one, four, one, you multiply them, you get four, plus zero, negative two, two, zero. I love when I have zeros. Love, love, love. Okay, now let's go the opposite way. One diagonal, two, three. We're gonna subtract these. So here's how I do it. Even me at this stage, Miss Malikian. First I put the minus here, then I go to my matrix because it's too many negatives. Okay, so first diagonal, zero, negative one, negative one, Zero. Does it matter which one you start with since no. it's a negative? No, it doesn't matter which one as long as all the green ones are being subtracted and all the red ones are being added. So minus three, four, two, multiply them, you get 24. Minus one, negative two, five. That sounds like negative 10. Last but not least, Determinant of A is negative 25. That's fun, isn't it? Or you could just do A is 25, negative 25. Okay? They mean the same thing. Too bad we don't go on a bus to go on field trips anymore because like this would be like the perfect pastime on a bus right going to a field trip i mean seriously <laughs> okay next let's find a inverse to find a inverse 
we're going to do it with a calculator. I'm not going to show you how to do it by hand. It is very possible to do it by hand, and people have been doing it for thousands of years. It's too long and complicated of a process, and we really don't need to do it. So let's get out our calculators. Um, here we go. Home screen. Okay. Here's how we're going to do this. You're going to go to menu. Um, menu. And look, you did not know this, but number seven, it's a whole menu of matrix options. So we're going to go to matrix. Okay. Before I find the inverse, I'm going to show you guys that you can also find a determinant using this. So here, let's go to number three, choose determinant, right? And now it asks determinant of what? What do you find the, what do you want to determine of? Go back to menu seven and let's create a matrix using option number one. Create a matrix. I can email you guys the write-up of the instructions here, okay? Okay, here it asks you for the number of rows that you want. When you're in this menu, you can either just type three or if you press the up button, it traverses through the numbers. So three, tab, up, three, okay. Look, you have a three by three matrix and now you wanna find the determinant of that. I love the facial expressions when I do these things. Okay. There's so, also a matrix button under the delete key. There is a matrix button. Yes. Um, I want to show you guys this way first, and then we can do it that way as well. So to put in the numbers, I like to press tab between each entry. So three tab, one tab, zero, negative two. Tab, negative one, tab, four, one, two, Five, ready, ready, press enter. There's the determinant. How cool is that? Okay, now let's go to inverse. There is a, a few different ways you can do it. You can either go to menu, matrix, create a matrix, or you can do what Tal was saying. This menu under the delete button Okay, has a whole, well, menu of stuff. And if you press this, okay, it could, it brings up the matrix option again. So we want a three by three, okay? And we're gonna put in the values again, right? Same way, okay? All right, I'm gonna do it very quickly and then I'm gonna show you guys yet a different way we could have done that. Four, what is it? One, two, five. Okay, now when you're here, you need to exit out of the matrix. You can either press the right arrow button to just go outside of the matrix or tab, they're the same. Okay, so look, do you see how I'm on, my cursor is to the right of the matrix now? I need A inverse. So you just do power of minus one, Okay, enter, there's your inverse. Okay, coolest thing ever, right? And then all you have to do is you have to just copy it down. So 13 over 25, one fifth. Mr. Malikian, can you show the math for 13 over 25? I, I got a different number on my calculator. I'm not sure what I did wrong. You may have just input input the wrong numbers into the matrix. See if your matrix is right. Um, Ms. Malikian, will you show again how to find, like get the inverse? Cause I wrote down the matrix. I just don't remember the exact steps. Yes. Um, okay. So that's the inverse. So look, there was another way we could have done this. You see how up here, I had already put in a matrix 
right? I found the determinant of it. And then I, I went and I entered it again. With your cursor, you could actually go up here. Okay, there are several ways you could do this. You can click somewhere here. And then with your, um, with the pad, the trackpad, is that what it's called? You can just click and drag and you can select this. You can now do control C, right? Come back down here, do control V. And there's the matrix, right? You also have the option of control C, control V. So several ways. Once you have your matrix input into the calculator, to find the inverse, you're going to do to the power of minus 1, because that's what inverse is. It's to the power of minus 1. OK? We could also have gone up to the first one here, highlighted that, press enter, and edited it. So I could have gone over here and just deleted the determinant part, and then I just have my matrix, which I can now edit. Could you also have multiplied that matrix by 1 over negative 25? Huh? Can you don't, can't you multiply that by the determinant? to get the inverse? No, it's not that because you see how all the numbers change. Like the three became a 13, right? This became a one over five. So it's not just, there is a whole other process to finding a determinant, um, an inverse of a three by three by hand. Okay, now let's recap. Let's recap what we've done. Um, we, worked with a two by two and a three by three. Okay. We found, we learned how to find the determinant and the inverse of a two by two. We learned how to find the determinant and the inverse of a three by three. This one, we only learned how to do it using the calculator. Okay, the other ones, you should know how to do manually and with a calculator, right? So on a test or a quiz, I will say, you know, show your work and I need to see, you know, the work to find the determinant, okay? Or I can say, please use your calculator because it's a nasty looking number and you will just use your calculator. But you have to know, like the inverse, you only know how to do it with a calculator. So you should know how to use your calculator with it. Okay. All right.